Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the DX Gamer Show. My name is Mike, aka Operation DX, and welcome to episode number 27. Yeah, we are just cruising along in this series, aren't we? Anyway, uh, we're just finishing up the final parts of this contract that uh, originally I wanted to abandon, but uh, we've pretty much got it 75% uh, done. We just need to land down and uh, collect the gravitational data, which also will give me the ability to test out the mining drills on this particular landing craft. And that is all good. We need to see how all that stuff's gonna work. This thing is probably going to hobble all over the ground because of the mining drills and how lightweight it is, but that's okay. As long as it can get the job done, it should be all good. But there's kind of like a little cheat that you can do yeah um we can probably accelerate time and it'll probably stop jittering around so <laughs> if we get into a bad situation i'm probably gonna do that to save the craft um the sas should keep the craft upright uh hopefully although you know with the, sh the craft shifting around it could pull the solar panels out of the sunlight and uh, that could you know drain the batteries and we don't want that to happen especially if it's landed down and the drills die and then we're not getting energy we'd have to wait for the sun to come around again to get right above the panels to charge it back up and that kind of thing so yeah we don't want that to happen anyway landing down in the dark and on minmus it's not so bad because we can kind of see the clutter around the surface and that is very very helpful there are bodies around Kerbin where there is not clutter around the surface, so we can't really see what's going on. The light on the craft is just not, it doesn't give you sufficient warning where the surface is on some of these really dark planets. So it's too little too late if you're heading too fast. Fortunately, yeah, we can kind of judge and manage our speed. And here we are landing down again on a slope. I don't like it, so I decided to go ahead and well, two things. I didn't like the slope, but also, uh, I don't think we're in the zone. We didn't get the message that we're in the zone. There it is. So we've got the message we're in the zone. Now we can land down. The slope wasn't all that bad, but um, I typically would prefer a more flat surface, especially for this craft. This craft, even more so than uh, the heavy craft, I would prefer like a flat surface. Which we wouldn't necessarily get because this isn't in the flats version or area of Minmus. Alright, so taking it nice and gentle. Landing down, and yes, I realize, guys, it's it's kind of dark. So I will flip the camera around so we can see the light side of the craft. There we go. It's nice and bright. I just got to get that gravitational data. I'm on the wrong side of the craft, of course. Um, this time I didn't uh, go overboard with the science packages. I simply just put one of each type because I figure the scientist is going to be coming down and if I need to reset any of the packages, they can do that. But uh, the instrumentation that is on this craft uh, doesn't really require any resetting. We don't have like some of the bigger ones like the little Lab Junior and that sort of thing, uh, the goo canisters. All right, so I'm just going to take a look, you know, testing out the craft's functionality. So I'm just going to take a look around the resources and see if uh, there's anything better. And hey... This actually looks like it's a higher percentage than the place that is supposed to be a higher percentage. So, um, yeah, that's kind of interesting. So I saw like a couple of like close to, you know, a little above 6%. It's okay. Um, there's plenty of resources in this area. <laughs> so that's the thing that was important. Um, even though I was just coming down for the gravitational data, uh, I, I am testing out the craft. So I might as well load up my... Ore tank with some ore. And uh, then I can transfer it over. And then we'll do our final transferring at the station. And then we will send her off on her maiden voyage. The goddess. Uh, X24, 96, 33, 30, whatever I named it. I named it something like that. Uh, and then I for interplanetary. So, yeah. Kind of changed the whole philosophy here <laughs> with that craft. It uh, it kind of like it kind of like takes away from my whole building the fuel network around 
But I still want to do some other stuff. Some of you have requested to do like some SSTO stuff and that sort of thing. So there are there are plenty of things to do. Um, we could always visit the other planets and stuff that I've uh, I didn't even, I didn't even visit in two two like Elu and uh, what's the other one? <laughs> There's another planet we could, oh Moho Moho yeah and we could check out the mole hole you know. That'd be kind of a cool thing. So uh, after we finish all the contracts, that's something uh, we consider uh, could consider to do. And here we are once again, speeding up time, which is a critically necessary thing to do in Kerbal Space Program, so we can catch up to the station and dock up and get get started, man. We are off to Duna next. That is our next destination. Probably, like I said, do some resource scanning. I don't think we need to do any landing depending on what our resources look like is pretty much whether I'll decide to do that or not and yes I am going to go ahead and brute force this because we are on a just massively different inclination and here is a really good place in the video to talk about some of the recent comments I like to do that and I'm, I'm glad you guys comment so let's see, um, oh yeah, so one of the ones was asking about the yellow clock uh, in the upper left hand corner of the screen. Yeah, it means that the game is crunching, uh, the physics calculations are slowing the game down because it cannot keep up. These are settings that you can change in your game settings uh, folder and Something like this, probably it wouldn't help out all that much. So uh, we're going to have to just deal with it. It's not super, super bad, but you can kind of see it crunch in a little bit. Um, it will crunch when we start getting Kerbals into the right positions, when we move them around and get closer to the station and that sort of thing. So that will be an issue. What else? Oh, yeah. KX Glider person. Um, I haven't forgot about you. That is going to be a KSP Extra video. Um... Yeah, you've been bugging me so, so much about it that uh, I think that I'm starting to feel obligated to actually do that. So <laughs> that is going to be interesting. But, you know, I caught flack on my uh, my Jeb, Bill, and Bob thing. So uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure I can deal with whatever comes with uh, creating a super, super cheat-like vehicle <laughs> like the KX Glider was. <laughs> that thing was ridiculous. But yeah, um, I just remember going and watching uh, the video after it had been mentioned, and I was like, oh no, 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 really? I'm really, okay. But yeah, I'm, I'll do it. It's cool. Uh, just got to realize that some of the uh, mods and stuff don't exist anymore, so I would probably do an update version of that craft, and I'll try to make it uh, just as cheaty, but I don't know if I'm going to take it to Eve like I did in that particular video. Uh, we'll we'll see how we, <laughs> we'll see how we do. Oh man, it just it makes me laugh just thinking about it. Okay, what else was there? There's tons of stuff. Um, of course, keep the series going. I got a couple more of those. Um, build an SSTO. So yeah, my plan here is uh, after I hopefully successfully finish the initial or the contract part of this mission because I have to come back to Kerbin. After I do the jewel thing to complete the whole Ike Kerbin thing. And I have a little bit of a concern about going to Ike and then going to Jewel and then coming back to Kerbin and whether or not that contract is actually going to register. I hope it does. Um, yeah, that's, so, that's, so I have a little concern about that. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if, if that happens. I may consider abandoning the contract. We're going to get a truckload of money, though, because we have a lot of contracts uh, on on the books right now. We have already completed two of the contracts. The station around Minmus, which my ship alone becomes like a station. And we just finished the gravitational survey of Minmus, which, again, I wish I didn't pick up. And now we are moving Kerbals over into their, uh, their positions for the future mission here. So getting my scientists in the lab, and then my pilot is going to be in the pilot seat of the ship. And then we are going to set off 
for our maiden voyage here. Now again, just speeding up time in the video so we're not spending a lot of time in the station because we did that during the previous episode. Uh, there was a lot of station management stuff. So just doing the finishing touches, making sure all the fuel is all completed, topped off, and we're ready to go and get this thing done, do this thing. And then I've got to make sure that certain tanks aren't getting burned, like the the tank that uh, is used for the landing craft. Those will burn if I don't lock off those tanks. You do that by right-clicking and then hitting the little like play symbol and just it puts a little X through it so that those tanks will not get used. Now, we uh, went back to the launch center and then went into the um, comms array so that we can get ourselves into a good position to get a Duna capture. So it's roughly about 45 degrees-ish. Um, and then I'll make any corrections I need to do. But maiden voyage time. <laughs> Okay, so making our final adjustments with our maneuver node to get as close as capture as we possibly can. We'll make our final corrections like we usually do. And like I always say, we have more than enough fuel. In this craft's case, it is uh, an overstatement as we can refuel this multiple times with the ore canisters. Not to mention we did a little mining with the small craft, so we have a full... Um, tank on the side with ore and then we have the centralized tank which is a big one 1500 ore and we should be all set so again if we have to do some mining when we get to duna then so be it not too big of a deal so we got our eight lvns burning and that is exactly why i put on these very very large cooling devices because at some point when you burn these guys for a considerable amount of time, which we probably will do for our jewel burn, we start running to we get those heat indicators. We start running into heat issues. So um, hopefully that will keep all of that managed. Uh, originally, I had some side, the smaller side cooling panels, but I went all out with the big ones, uh, and I think that saved me on parts a little bit. Oh, maybe I kept them. Look, I, it looks like they still have them on the sides there. Yeah. I figured more cooling, the better with this kind of thing with eight LVNs. I was kind of worried that what would happen is sticking the four blocks of LVNs right next to each other would cause them to heat up too much and that sort of thing. All right. So now we're beginning our science collection, um, more or less data collection. We're loading up our lab with data so that we can go ahead and get our scientists off and running because there are some packages that I have not fired off. This is technically considered orbiting the star. Now, they have already gotten all the science they're going to get, but you get the whole other data thing. So, um, yeah, tons of, tons of stuff I get to load up. And this is perfect because 
when you start doing a burn off to another body, especially Jewel, I want to make sure that I'm totally loaded up when I do my Jewel burn because it takes several years. It'll take us several years to get from Duna to Jewel. And fortunately, the contracts that I have right now don't have a time limit. So there's nothing to worry about there. That's that's also why I wanted to complete those other two contracts first. So pretty much had no choice to go to Minmus and then complete the gravitational survey thing and then go do the maiden voyage. Uh, one of them had like a 13 year time limit, which I could have done because I guess I probably could have gotten to Jewel and back in about six years, maybe seven years. But why, why worry about it? Because that kind of limits me like what if what if after jewel i decide hey you know what i don't want to come back to kervin i want to go to elu or you know what i'm gonna to go to moho instead that kind of thing so that's why i decided to go ahead and just do those contracts first knock it out of the way and we have no limitations on how long it's going to take us to do these missions anyways that's pretty much it for this one guys thanks for watching i'll see you next time have a great day and take care